Hi, this is Mariah Gullo from The Hollywood Reporter, and I'm in studio today with Jennifer Morrison. Hi. Hey. hey. How are you? I'm great. So I saw Sundogs, mm -hmm. um, your new movie that you directed, mm -hmm. and I watched it, and at the end, I wanted to keep going. Oh, that's nice. I wanted to continue to see what was happening. I was like... Oh, this is a great beginning to the next adventure. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, tell me about how you, this uh, movie came into your hands and why you decided that this yeah. would be your first directed feature. feature. Yeah, um, I just was really lucky that the script made its way to me. Um, when you haven't directed a feature before, it's not like you're being you know, offered a bunch of great scripts. You're mm -hmm. just kind of struggling to find material. So, um, Were you actively searching for... I was. For I, I didn't know exactly when it was going to happen, but I definitely knew I wanted to direct a feature. And the writer had um, written the film Warrior that I was in. Mm -hmm. And so I knew him from that. And he had seen my short film and liked it. And so he sent me the script. And it was a script that he'd had for a long time. And it had kind of been attached to different people at times and then let go of. And it just it sort of never found its home. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I just loved it. I loved the characters. I loved the overall message. I love the ending. And I had such a great response to it. And so I, I optioned the script for him. So that was how I kind of stumbled upon it. The movie takes place in 2004. So mm -hmm. did he write it around that time? Um, the movie actually had been set in several different time periods at different oh, points. Um, and it shifts your perspective based on, you know, what the backdrop of that moment is. And I um, I felt strongly that 2004 was the right time because it was uh, had a, a couple years, di you know, three years dif distance from 9-11 and everything that had happened and the tragedy of that event. But it was still close enough that we were really in that intense set sense of fear that set mm -hmm. in in America. And so I wanted that atmosphere to be the backdrop of what everyone was dealing with mm -hmm. in this film. Mm -hmm. This movie... It plays around with uh, naturalism and then the, a kind of quirky, kind mm -hmm. of indie movie feel. Mm -hmm. Was that intentional? Were you trying to set like a certain tone that was uh, very naturalistic? Yeah, I, I, you know, it's very intentional filmmaking in the sense that, like, it's not handheld. Every shot was planned and set up and considered, and, um, you know, it was something that the, the visual plan was was a very set visual plan that we were going after. But in terms of the acting and the performances and the interacting of everyone, I wanted it to be genuine. I wanted people to feel like they related to these people, and we were never trying to get a laugh, nor were we trying to be indulgent in any moment. We were just mm -hmm. trying to have everyone be as honest and as communicative and as connected to each other as possible. And then in Inevitably, there's moments that are genuinely funny and there's moments that are genuinely dramatic back based on kind of going at it from that perspective. So I think what feels a little bit um, maybe like heightened in a sense is more the, the visual choices and then mm -hmm. what feels more grounded and, and genuine is the connection between the actors and the, and the characters. Right, I can see that. I can mm -hmm. see like the visual choices being more on the on the quirky side, mm -hmm. with the performances being more natural. And yeah. by the way, Allison Janney and Ed O'Neill are national treasures. They're just amazing <laughs> together. I mean, they're both amazing no matter what. But yeah. just it, it's also incredible because they had never met before, wow. and they just fell into that rhythm so quickly. It's not like we had a lot of time. You know, we mm -hmm. shot this movie in only eighteen days, and mm -hmm. I think they met two days before they were shooting, you know? Right. So um, it was just incredible to watch two masters just meet, f totally find that connection and just have that chemistry right away. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this this movie, it got a lot of juice from film festivals. Mm -hmm. um, is there any uh, regional differences with film festivals? Sure. I, you know, I... I would be curious to see the statistics on something like that, you know? I mean, it's fascinating. Um, people definitely have different reactions, you know? I've sat through several of the screenings just out of curiosity of when people laugh or when people get quiet or when people cry. And it's there are certain points that are pretty consistent, but there are some things that are that swing drastically differently depending on what audience is watching it. Does anything um, come to mind? Uh, the, the one thing I, every audience across the board, every city, every everywhere, um, everyone laughs when um, Allison and Ed are in the kitchen and, and she says she wants to travel. And he goes, oh, you know, when you've when you've traveled for a living, every place is kind of the same. And she was like, yeah, that doesn't sound right. And there's something about the way she said it. It's like every single audience in every single city laughed at that line. Awesome. <laughs> uh, what were some of the challenges of making the film? Honestly, with this one, the biggest challenge was all of the time restraints. We, um, mm. the, in terms of the way the financing came together for the film and, and the timing of it, mm. we actually only had nine days of prep and 18 days to shoot. And that wow. is just really tricky to do for a feature. And it was a lot of pressure put on my creative team who 
was amazing. I mean, they yeah. were absolutely incredible. Really had to operate at an insane pace to be able to pull this off so quickly and with, with such um, craftsmanship and care. Did you have any uh, casting choices that were particularly interesting to you or any good stories? You know, I mean, the, this I felt so lucky with this cast. My hope when I read the script was that these were really rich characters that hopefully great actors were going to respond to. And luckily I was right about that. You know, yeah. the fact that, um, like, Alison Janney really loved the script and, and she related to that character in a very personal way. And she said yes and, and agreed to do it very quickly. Um, Michael Angarano, the same way. He just, he made an amazing tape where I... But that guy's Ned, like that just works, you know, mm -hmm. that seems really right. And then, you know, Exhibit and Melissa were um, more of discoveries for me because I didn't really know Exhibit's work as an actor. Mm -hmm. And it was really my casting director, Tamara Nutkid, who's amazing, who just really saw something special in him and um, was like, no, I really think you should meet him. And mm -hmm. we sat down and he was just incredible. That soulfulness and that depth that really came through in the character was in him. And I thought, man, there's nobody else. He's great, you know. Yeah. And Melissa was just so special because you really had to find a girl who you believed was street smart enough to kind of be scamming guys to kind of make her way through life as a young kind of messed up runaway, but at the same time naive enough to fall for Ned yeah. and the situation that they were in. So it was a tricky line to walk to find the right woman that was going to, young woman who was going to be able to find that balance and she just nailed it. So it was one of those things like it kind of came together one piece at a time and so much of it was guided by my casting director and they all seemed like the obvious choice as soon as they fell into place, you mm -hmm. know, like it was, it was definitely lucky that people who were such great actors and so experienced were interested in being a part of it because it really made it possible to shoot that fast. Mm -hmm. So now you're kind of You've cut your teeth on being a new filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like a really good time to be a first-time female filmmaker to have kind of a new eye yeah. to show to Hollywood? Yeah, I feel really lucky in terms of the timing because when we shot this film two years ago, so when we were shooting it and I was looking for the financing, um, the female film, filmmaker conversation was not the same as it is now. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was exciting to see as the film came together and as we had a completed film and we were going through the festival circuit, as all of these things started to develop, to realize that the movie was going to get the love and attention that I hoped it would get as opposed to being sidelined for maybe the wrong reasons. So right. I felt like it was a really lucky time for me that th that the world started to pay attention in that way to those issues. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you ever feel that you're treated differently as a new filmmaker than other first-time filmmakers who are maybe men or... Yeah, it's I'm saying it's, No, I know, but it's, <laughs> well, it's tricky. It's a tricky answer because... I'll never know. I'll never be a man when or I walk in a room. You'll never you know? be in the I'll meeting. I'll never have the experience <laughs> on the other side to know mm. what the real difference would be, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and like, the conversation is on the table, and, and I think people really want to, to find that balance. We want to mm -hmm. find it so that we are all equally footed and equally paid and equal having equal opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, I think, you know, the bulk of people feel that way. But what's going to be tricky is to dig out those subconscious cultural things that we're all guilty of, you know, as men and women, you know, because Absolutely. it's been a certain way for a really long time, and it takes time to course correct all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's equal parts frustrating, but also really exciting because mm -hmm. you get to kind of pave the way into the new behaviors. Yeah, it's a lot of responsibility, too, because we yeah. have to rethink, you know. Mm -hmm. We have to really kind of figure out what a clean slate is and what it looks like to rethink the future as opposed to just kind of trekking along the same way it's always been. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple of questions before I let you go. Sure. Um, can you tell me three goals for the next few years for you, just three that yeah. you have? Um, well, one is I'm in the midst of writing a screenplay, so to finish that and get that into production. Um, two, um, there, there's a project that I've been developing with a bigger company that I feel like I really believe in, and my goal would be to see that take the next steps in, in its development process to really be on track to be the film that I could picture that being. Um, and three would be to um, to spend more time with my friends and family. Oh, yeah. you know, Because I feel like, um, you know, I spend all these years on, on network television, which was incredible, mm -hmm. but really took me away from everybody 
And then I felt this amazing momentum from Sundogs as a filmmaker, and yeah. I, I don't want to lose that momentum, and I do want to professionally continue to grow and develop as a filmmaker, um, but I want to make sure to find that balance where I'm still keeping the people I love the most close and, and really making time for them and making sure that I'm reciprocating their love and support as much as they're giving it to me. So I, that's that would be the third goal. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so first job that made you think I've made it. Probably my Rice Krispies commercial when I was 10 years yes. old. <laughs> I mean, you know, Rice Krispies really means you've made it. Um, it got me my SAG card, yeah. so, you know. Um, awesome. But also, so there was that. Um, but there was also, uh, I was very lucky because I was doing these commercials as a, as a young kid in Chicago. And um, because I started doing commercials pretty consistently, the film department started taking me more seriously and started putting me on tape for, for movies out here. And when I was 13, I booked the movie Intersection from a tape in mm. Chicago. And so that was definitely another kind of stepping stone as a young kid feeling like, um, you know, I was introduced to a whole different world. And um, I was in, it was exciting and also intimidating. And I remember walking away from that set thinking, I don't want to do this again until I know what I'm doing because I was very aware that I was just going purely off of instinct and really had no idea what I was doing. Um, the passion was there, the desire was there, um, but I wanted to, I, I wanted to feel like it was something that I took seriously and I studied and, and like investigated and, and felt like I showed up with something to offer. So it, it kind of sparked that in me. Mm. Do you, does the learning process ever end or no. is it just, that's what you like about that's, it though, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the joy is that like, I'm a huge reader. I mean, if you walk into my house, there's just books everywhere. Um, and part of the joy of whether I'm acting or directing or producing is the amount of research that goes into all of it. You know, the yeah. memoirs you read and then the weird things that you study. It's like for this project that I'm developing right now, I'm like reading about poisons, you know, like I would oh, never wow. normally read, you know what I mean? There's just yeah. like things like that where you dive into all these worlds and you get into all this weird detail of stuff that you would never have learned about or known about. And there's just so much interesting texture and nuance to just kind of consuming all of that content and then figuring out how to turn it into something creative. So, mm -hmm. Um, I think the endless learning process is definitely part of the appeal of the yeah. business to me. Can we expect a, a period piece from you? At some I hope so. Yeah, I mean, weirdly, Sundogs is, how crazy is it that yeah. 2004, 2004 is a period piece? Um, my budget <laughs> reflects that that's a period piece because you have to have, wow. like, all the right cars and yeah. all the right technology. Like, it's expensive. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yes, no, I know what you mean by, like, a <laughs> real period piece. Um, I would love to do that. I'm really, I'm really intrigued. I'm intrigued by that as an actor and as a director, to be honest. Um, I love uh, I love the research and the joy that would go into kind of nailing all those details of a particular time period. Nice. Okay. Well, last question to you: What was your worst audition experience? Oh man. I mean, obviously not the Rice Krispies commercial. That went well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I you know I feel pretty lucky. I don't think I've ever had like an actual tragedy like where it was just a horrible, horrible tragedy. Um, I do remember back in the day when there was like, you know, 100 or 200 pilots a year and I would be going out on six or seven pilot auditions in a day. Um, I, I do remember there was a day that I walked into a meeting and I mixed up in my head which script was which because I had six uh, meetings that day. Wow, it was like my yeah. sixth audition. And it wasn't that I hadn't read the script. and It wasn't that I wasn't prepared. It was just that I was thinking of the wrong story with the, with the characters that were on the sides that I was reading. And so I remember like doing an audition the and the casting director was like, that was great. You know, what do you think of the script? And I started talking about it. And she was like, <laughs> this really weird look on her face. And I was like, why would she do that? Why would she do that? And I get in the car and I like dig through all my piles of scripts and I was like, I was talking about the wrong the script. The wrong script. So, like, <laughs> and she I right. know, and I just, but then she's probably thinking that I was, like, super unprepared and <laughs> right. crazy. Yeah. And I'm, like, was, actually had read the script, yeah. but just You're had like, gotten I'm it, like. over prepared, actually. <laughs> I was, like, I just I've had too many meetings today. today. <laughs> oh, wow. So that was definitely not a, <laughs> not a great impression that I left on that person. <laughs> Well, congratulations on Sundogs. Thank you. Um, it's on Netflix. Yes, it's on Netflix. So you can push play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're looking forward to all, all the new movies from thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.